all this metal fabrication to put a new body on a Power Wheels Jeep, and I've never once checked if the power part of it works. Hmm. Here is what has become of the Jeep. I got these two motors. They're wired into this switch. I have an extra switch. Don't know why. Uh, this plugs into the battery. Here's the gas pedal. Very simple. I've never seen if either of these work. Now these have uh, a motor per per axle here. Not axle, per wheel, whatever. The axle is just kind of freewheeling. Doesn't really do much. Just holds the wheels in place. And this, I was told, works. But this doesn't, so we're gonna check that. Although this, when I found it, this was in a bag in here, and the whole thing was full of, like half full of water. So I don't know if any of it's still good, but we're gonna have to find out. I was told this ran when parked, but poorly. So, you know, maybe not the best idea to start a project on one of these, but it's, it's fine, I'll make it work. We're gonna put this aside for now. Here's the thing, this plugs into a Power Wheels battery. I don't have a Power Wheels battery, at least not right now. Uh, runs 12 volts, car battery runs 12 volts, but I can't hook this up to a car battery in a non-janky way at the moment. What would be easiest is if I could plug into an outlet and stick the two wires, like two stripped wires, into this and then have power, but there's two problems with that. One, the outlet's 120 volts, not 12 volts, and two, the outlet is AC power. These, the batteries, car batteries, these motors are for DC power. There's a big important difference. So in electricity, it's gonna be nerd time, sorry. In electricity, if you have a circuit, electricity flows around a complete circuit. In DC power, which is what this is, direct current, it travels in one direction. The current goes in one direction around. AC, which is your wall, that stands for alternating current, and the direction the current travels through the circuit alternates back and forth. So if you're an AC-DC music fan and you're wondering what it means and why there's a little lightning bolt in there, electricity. Now you know. So I have to figure out a way to get 12 volts DC into this so I can test it and make sure it works. This, this is just in my way. Oh, my other welding lens. That's going back on the fridge. There we go. These are hubs for important for some reason. I don't remember, but I'm not gonna throw them out. Junk. Junk and project cars fill up with garbage, and this isn't even a car. What am, what's wrong with me? So basically, remember what I said about the circuit? Circuit going one way or both ways? Either way, it needs to be a complete circuit. What this does, this gas pedal that you probably can't see, when the pedal's not pushed down, the circuit's open. Think of it like think of like a racetrack, but turn one is just gone. It's open. If the cars try to go around, they're gonna crash and everyone's gonna die. And that's probably not great for television, but a closed circuit, the whole thing is there. The cars can go around and around and around and around and around just fine. When you push the pedal down, it is like taking the open circuit and closing it. Then you take your foot off the pedal, opens the circuit, car stops. Get it? Pedal down, vroom. Pedal off, not vroom. Oh, this doesn't go vroom, whir. Oh, there's a bunny in my driveway. Stupid bunnies eating my peppers. Diversion. Okay, so I have a method of wiring this up to test temporarily, and I'm going to uh, test that out now, but I'm probably going to have to mosaic this because it's not super advisable, and like all, all the time I say, I'm an idiot, don't do this, uh, some idiot's going to do it. You know, there's lots of idiots. One of them's going to show up on the internet eventually. I mean, look at me. I have a YouTube channel. Can you believe that? It's crazy. Yeah, there's a great history behind AC and DC power. There are things called the current wars. I think it was Edison was trying to push DC power, and another guy, Westinghouse, the name you might recognize, maybe not, he was pushing AC power. And they were both arguing about many reasons why one is more or less good for certain things. Like, really, you can, you can have AC or DC power running uh, lights or motors, but the motors have to be specific to DC power to run on DC power. Uh, I like DC motors better anyway because you can vary the speed with the voltage. AC you can't. Although my washing machine has variable speed AC motors. Very expensive. Even my wholesale price it's very expensive. Okay, I think we're good. This up or down changes the direction of the current. It'll go one way this way, the other way with it up. And that's supposed to be forward and reverse for the motors. These motors here spin these there's there's a motor this is the motor this is a gearbox and this connects to these hub things which connect to the tires 
and make make car go. Car go! So we're gonna see if they work. Okay, moment of truth. I hope, I really hope this doesn't shock me. It won't. It's low enough voltage, it's fine. Oh, look at that! They move! Let's see, okay. They're kind of spinning away from each other. Let's see. Oh, they're going the opposite way. Huh. This one's really motor and this one's kind of lame. Yeah, this one's fine. Not worried about that. This one sucks. I wonder why that is. Anyway, awesome! That works! Huzzah! That means this switch works, so screw that other switch. This switch works. The gearboxes aren't stripped. Good. Whew. That, uh, that took me way too long to test that. Almost done with the body of the thing. Okay, dangerous contraption undone. That was more, probably more like 14 volts than 12, but it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't matter. This motor has a problem. Why is that? First theory. The way you get different amounts of power out of different motors for the same voltage uh, is sort of complicated, somewhat nerdy, but we have a set voltage, 12 volts. And yet, these motors put out less power than the motor in your car engine starter. And that's because if you have the same amount of volts, you vary the amount of resistance, and you end up with different amounts of amps. Think of like plumbing. You have water pressure in your pipes, right? You got water pressure, whether your tap is open or not, tap sink if you're an American, and the water pressure is just that. It's the pressure pushing on the water. That is kind of like voltage. You have a certain amount of voltage in a power line, and you hear that, like higher volts, sounds more impressive, more power. It's more, more push for the power through the wires. And at the same water pressure, you can have different amounts of water flowing through the wires. Huh, I thought this was gonna be a bust. But there's a calculation called the something or another, which I may look up, where you can use two of the three volts resistance amps and figure out what the third is. I'm testing the resistance of the two motors. That's how like a light bulb can be brighter or less bright, even though the outlet always has 120 volts. If the light bulb at 120 volts has less resistance to the flow of electricity, then more electricity flows through it, more amps, and you end up with a brighter light bulb. This is indicated by the watt number. Higher numbers of watts are higher. Yeah, no, this is, there's definitely different resistance to these motors. Higher number of watts means brighter light. So watts is volts times amps. If, if anyone can follow that, this one is a higher, higher amount of resistance. Oh, I thought that would be a bust. I thought I'd get to tear into these gearboxes. So that's like two ohms, and that's like three ohms. This, by the way, this is from Harbor Freight. I think I got it. It was like free with something else. It was one of those free coupons. And I'll tell you, it was worth exactly that much money. Next part, this problem. So this was a side piece that I bent around. This was that, that curved piece that I made with the shrinker stretcher. I cut an opening, curved around. I was looking for curved transitions, curved transitions. This is all welded, and this is actually uh, lap welded, or seam welded, whatever. Some kind of welding to make the seam, the visual seam go away. I'm going to do that here later. But I need to fill this opening. So that means it's time to break out the paper. I'm going to make a paper template of this opening, cut it out, transfer it to steel, cut that out, fit it, weld it in. Yes, I have been working on this a little bit off camera, but on only a little bit. Yeah, I hope my rambling discussion was helpful. But the thing is, with DC motors, you can adjust how fast they go by adjusting the voltage. That's all you have to adjust. Of course, batteries have a, there's a limit to how many amps of battery can put out at a given time, but we're gonna ignore that completely because this isn't a lecture on electricity that I'm not qualified to give. Come on, try and use my dirty fingers to mark this. Good enough. So there's like a great story about uh, during the current wars when uh, Edison and Westinghouse, I believe I decided was the guy. I, mean, I suppose I could have looked that up in the cut there, but I, I didn't. Anyway, they were trying to debate which one was better in an obvious shade throwing fashion, which Edison was very good at. Uh, there's, a, there's a popular story that he made a show, a spectacle out of electrocuting an elephant using AC power. AC was Westinghouse's thing. To say, look how dangerous AC power is. You should, you should do DC power. Listen to me, do DC power. Just one slight problem with that, other than that AC and DC power can both kill you, uh, is that uh, that story apparently never happened. Like it's just a myth. 
The myth part, by the way, is that Edison was involved. He, he wasn't. They, some people definitely electrocuted an elephant using AC power. Uh, but that was like 10, 20 years after the current wars. Like the, the animals that Edison electrocuted, which he did, I guess, were like horses and dogs and stuff. Which makes it so much different, right? But don't feel too bad about that, that elephant. He was a murderer. Not a joke. Not a joke. Convicted murderer. Sentenced to die by electrocution. As crazy as that sounds. Crazier, and perhaps why Edison is uh, linked to it, the Edison Film Company, I think, recorded it. So there is video, old-timey video, of an elephant being executed with AC power. So that's horrifying. Let's see. Looking out, oh, gotta trim a little more. Trim, check, trim, check. Get all the details worked out in paper. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Phew. Got some metal. Man, this metal's rusty. I found a thing that's supposed to, like, fix that and then put a coating on it. Yeah, I, I, I never bought it. Put it in my shopping cart in the online store. Never ordered it. You know, you might say the elephant was merely a product of its environment, which is probably true. I mean, it was, like, forced to perform in a circus or something like that. And I'm sure circus animals aren't treated super great. And by not super great, I mean they're probably really, really poorly treated. But still, you treat a human poorly and they murder someone, they, they gotta go to jail. Unfortunately, there's no elephant prison. So, I guess bad, bad luck for that elephant. Something, 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 animal rights. But yeah, that, uh, that one motor was like 50% higher resistance, which is only like one ohm or something. So that number is very small, but so is the voltage number. It's only 12 volts. So we end up with uh, not a lot of amps, not a lot of volts, not a lot of amps, not a lot of power. Also not a very big battery, so it's not like it was able to pump out a ton of power. And those Power Wheels batteries, the, the Power Wheels ones, there's just a normal 12 volt battery inside, a small one. But there's also a, a fuse. So like if there's a short, you end up with a little spark, the fuse blows, and they make you buy a new battery. Can you believe that? I do not believe it's a serviceable fuse. Short circuiting, by the way, when you, when you get a short, that means there's no resistance at all. And all the power goes through the maximum amount all at once. And that generally causes electrical fires or melting. That's how, uh, how welders work. That wire, hold on. Never mind, the leads are all caught up on junk. The wire coming out of the welder touches this. The electricity can come through there, through this, into the ground clamp, which is supposed to put somewhere close, and back into the welder. Complete circuit. That short circuit sends as much power as you've set in the settings through it, and it's so hot because so much power is going through it, melts it. And that's how welding works. Melts them together. The little wire also feeds more metal in. And that wire is steel, because I'm this is steel, coated in copper. And the copper, uh, copper is a better conductor of electricity than steel. That's why wires are copper. So when you live really far away from the power plant, you don't have less power because the the wire cuts down by adding resistance. This is way not relevant to building a power wheel Jeep. I'm sorry. Cut it out. <clears throat> falling metal, falling metal. But yeah, AC and DC power for all of uh the marketing lies, they'll both kill you. Although I believe, from what I've heard anyway, DC power, volt for volt, hurts a lot more. Fortunately, I've never been shocked with DC power, but I can tell you AC ain't fun. Being shocked, not a great activity. Would not recommend. Would only rank it seven out of 10. There, cut out my pattern. Gonna check it, eyeball. Little trimming is always necessary. Trimming, trimming. Oh yeah, that's looking better. Boom, I think, I think that's good. Yeah. Okay, while Ponytail Man's doing the welding, I did the math on those motors. So we know voltage is 12 volts, resistance is two ohms for one, three ohms for the other. Now voltage equals resistance times amperage, which means the same thing as amperage equals voltage over resistance. So the good motor at two ohms with 12 volts equals six amps. 6 amps times 12 volts equals 72 watts. That's, that's like a power number. 72 watts. It is 72 watts of go-ness. 
The bad motor has an extra ohm of resistance, 3 ohms of resistance at 12 volts. 12 divided by 3 obviously is 4, 4 amps. 4 amps times 12 volts equals 48 watts. That's less. That's a lower number than 72. Lower number equals less. Go fast. So there you go. An extra ohm of resistance can really screw you up. Also, if you think 70 whatever and 48 watts is kind of small numbers, that's like light bulb numbers a lot. Just remember, this is a very slow children's toy, so it doesn't need to go that fast. Also, if I were to double the voltage, like with two Power Wheels batteries in series, I would end up with 288 watts for the good motor. That's considerably more. And that's only for one motor. Of course, then the plastic gears and the gearboxes would fry, and that would be a whole heap of trouble. So obviously I plan on doing that, but I might also need to find a source of replacement gearboxes, preferably with metal motors. Motors, gears, whatever. Metal gears. That's what I need. Not motors. The motors are metal. And I already found this place, so I'm going to make sure the kid can drive the thing and not destroy everything in sight, and then maybe I'll make it go faster. So there. I brought it back. Electricity, formulas, electric eating circus elephants, back to Power Wheels Jeep. Of course, these numbers might be way off because there's a very good chance my math was wrong. There's also an even better chance that that free Harbor Freight thing uh, was probably crap. It certainly feels like crap. And there we go. The patch isn't perfect, but it's good enough for filler. Filler and paint.